Hmm? If you would what? like. All right. He's, what would he's I do? It. We are live. Oh, remember. Uh-huh. You don't want to say Tell me you forgot the one time I remember. <laughs> no, he did. Of course he did. No, he did it. He's trolling me. <laughs> he's stuck. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, um, yeah, we can start now. Look at that. This is this, literary. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. yeah. Just, this yeah. is Literary Roadhouse. One short story, once a week. I have an ace. Hi, Gerald. I'm Andy. And this week, we're discussing Floating by Pichaya. I think I'm going to, I hope I'm not messing up the last name. Right? I should just do that again in one take. I had written down how to pronounce it. I messed it up. Okay. We are discussing Floating by Pichaya Sudbantad. I don't know if I put the right emphasis in the right syllable. Um, okay. So, in Floating... We follow the story of Cookie. Cookie uh, lives in Bangkok. Her in her parents above her parents' old noodle shop, which she inherited, but now she uses it to teach uh, Mandarin and English to students. She tutors them in Mandarin and English. And there is a flood coming in. The water's been rising. Um, there's several storms over Thailand. There's a lot of water. Um, and her partner Egg uh, has built a concrete wall to keep the water out. And he's very confident in his concrete wall, which surprises her because he's not an engineer. He works in hotel management okay but uh so she's anxious about it and she has a uh elderly neighbor who's always been in the neighborhood auntie Bo is what they call her but i don't think they're related it's just what they call her and um uh when she was little her parents told her that auntie Bo was a crusoe which is uh horrible i feel like every culture has uh horrible women ghosts specifically so here we go this is um which is a very cool one, actually. It's a floating head over a body of like just intestines and stuff. And then they have like a human form where they blend into society and are just, I guess, old and mysterious. Um, so the water keeps coming in over the next few days. Fewer and fewer students show up. She's Some people are leaving. They're going for higher ground. She stays behind. Egg's very confident. He has a lot of wiring everywhere in the apartment, which seems problematic. Um and then there's a few little things that ground you in Cookie's life. Like she's watching like the Thai version of American Idol and like shouting at the TV because the wrong person got eliminated. So, um, and she's watching on TV other areas that are badly floated, uh, flooded and she hopes it's um, far away. Well, that fateful night comes, the floodwaters are really high. Egg's concrete wall did not uh, hold, surprises no one. And, um, so they're stuck. They're stranded on the second floor with few provisions. And eventually they need to get rescued. Uh, and a guy in a motorized canoe comes through. They can't take any of their possessions. There's no room. They're taking as many people as possible. They try to find Auntie Bo. They can't. Um, and then the main character, Cookie, goes to um, a place for people who, who have been flooded out of their homes, basically doing intake, hoping to see Auntie Bo, though she knows she never probably will. Eventually she and Egg move to where his family are in a part of the country that has droughts because that's how climate change works so um so they go where the droughts are and um they get different kind of work he works at like a mobile store with an uncle she no longer does tutoring she does translations now they live in a house surrounded by cassava um fields that parched get parched and die buffaloes die not enough water he egg eventually impregnates a customer at the mobile store and leaves her and um uh, there's an ambiguous ending as to whether, not that ambiguous, whether or not um, Cookie becomes a Krasu. There's strong evidence that she does. There's a whole section in the middle where the Krasu are talking to the reader and they're basically like, I don't know why we get such a bad rap. Lots of people like becoming Krasu. We don't got to force them against their will. They're down more than you would think. Um, I mean, it's kind of gross. We have to spit in their mouth to do it, but they get over it and then life's good as a Krasu. Uh, also, Cookie, what about you? Hmm? <laughs> and um, you never get a definitive answer, but it's pretty clear because she's described as basically becoming a recluse who only comes out to eat and never hungers. Okay, that's the summary. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I just did that little <laughs> right on the other towel. <clears throat> <sighs> okay, so what do you guys think of this story, Gerald? Um, I, I, I liked it okay. Um, and then I thought eh, the the ending's a bit sort of blah, 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 and then this happened and then it's over and and so I, I don't I don't like those. It seemed like there's a lot of build up to them moving away and and starting a new life and and well, there's a lot of build up in, into the you know the floods coming and and what happens and then 
and then the move away and it all goes wrong and and so i just think it's but i, I it's it intrigued me it was interesting i enjoyed it um uh, so yeah yeah it was um it was pretty good i think okay andy yeah i thought it was uh super great uh Man, the bit the bit in the middle where they switched to first person narration by the Krasu, I was like, oh, oh, I didn't know we were doing this kind of story. Okay, <laughs> I thought it was just, I thought it was just fun story. Okay, vampire ladies can talk to me. That's fine. That makes me feel good. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, that was just real good. That was just real good. And right, the complete shift from third to first first person narration, and it's like, hey. Hey, we're 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 some vampire ladies. What's up? Let me talk to you, reader. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it got me. It got me right in where my emotions live. It felt good. Vampire ladies don't talk to me all the time. Right. Okay. Right. And yeah. also, you know, I, I like the abrupt shift that's not signaled in any way. In any way. Yeah. I like Just, that. Boom, we're doing this now. I was like, oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. We are, and I love it. We are. I love everything about it. Yeah. And also, I like how, like, it tries to do that thing that many short stories include, like, it tends to be when I decide to write, like, what I like to do, too, which is, like, the ambiguous ending. That's not that ambiguous, though. Like, she's a, like, yeah. they're real because they spoke to us, and she definitely became one. <laughs> right. Yeah. In the first part, it was, like, I got you, like, foreshadowed, but, like, real good, quick, short story foreshadowing, right? Like, mm -hmm. like hey, Chris Sue, that's a, that's a thing. Did you know? Did you know that's a thing? But, like, in no way at that point were we taking it seriously yet. And then the Chris right. Sue show up and, like, hey, by the way, let me, let me tell you something. They're like, oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then, right, and then that. In the th when we return to third person narration, it lets it pretend it's an ambiguous ending, except for that whole big chunk in the middle. We're like, now nah, we're gonna we're gonna turn Cookie into a vampire lady. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I, I, I you make a great point about the foreshadowing because the section where you find out that Crusoes are even a thing. Well, I mean, I guess if you're Thai, you've always known this. You're from that region, but sure. for us Western readers, right? When you like, you're like, oh, okay. Um, it's in the part of the story where. Uh, she's just talking about her childhood. So it just seems like, oh, silly childhood things, right? Um, yeah. So it's really easy to just dismiss it as like characterization. Who is this person? And not right. like, yeah. Yeah. Foreshadowing mm. of actual plot. Also, I like that Egg is like the way that Egg is characterized. He's like, it's not surprising when he like leaves her, right? But yet, I don't know. There's something about him where you feel just like she settled for the tutoring job in her parents' old noodle shop, and that wasn't the height of her ambition. She kind of settled for egg, and in both cases, the settling seems fine, kind of given where she came from. And I don't really. I feel like I need to analyze how this author did that, where you know, like egg's not a bad person, but somehow Cookie's settling, and yet it makes sense. Like you're like, all right. I don't know. It's like it's hard to put my finger on this sense of like in both her personal and her professional life, she just kind of got stuck and she's like, all right. You might say she was just floating. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we we don't think that I mean she she wasn't so at what point does she does she become one of those things that we kind of I think pronounce? before she wakes up. Right, she wakes up downstairs that one day, and then eggs right before the flood happens. Right, right after the interlude. I thought she became one of those things once she was already out in the countryside, mm. uh, because part of what makes the Kursu is that like isolation that comes from some kind of trauma. Because remember um, when her parents tell her that Auntie Bo is a Kursu, it's like oh, something horrible that we don't tell children happened to her, so that's why she's like this. So it seems kind of trauma related too, in the typical way that most female ghosts in most cultures are made, right? Like I'm thinking of like La Llorona, which is always like, oh, she they exist from trauma. So I see it as like losing everything and having to get up and uproot and move, which again could be when you're on the bottom, yeah, when she's sleeping downstairs. Also, how yeah. come traumatized women become horrible monsters and traumatized men don't? Or they do, but they're like sexy monsters, you know? 
like vampires. That's your opinion. Well, and the opinion well, of and right vampires others. anyway. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it is. I. I see. I, I. I can't make my mind up about egg. I. I just. I don't know. He, he seems like a bit of a bleh, character, sort of. You know, everything yeah. he does isn't quite right, and and uh, you know, he yeah. keeps buying stuff. I, I love. I love the bit where she, she talked about the the devices that were what they suckled by their wall <laughs> outlets. Very good. Yeah, that's very good. clever. I liked that. That was a um, good word. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, but um, yeah, it, it's it's just it's sort of I, I suppose he's he's not he's not the main character and he's very much a, he's, he's almost a, it's almost wasn't worth giving him a name really because he you know he did some stuff and then and then he built a wall which didn't work and and then eventually he ran off with this other woman and it's sort of he he was like a like a footnote to her life almost it, it's, yeah yeah i think that was know. intentional yeah yeah She's, she's like living a life of footnotes. Like, <laughs> so is her job kind of, you know, like she isn't particularly, yeah, there's something very stuck about her from the beginning and or floating as any put it. And she was already a good candidate for becoming a Chrisu before the flood, but the flood definitely, I think, pushed her over the edge. It's it's, it's kind of strange because there was no, there didn't seem to be any anything which which prompted her becoming the, the ghosty thing. Um, it seemed like they were, you know, she was having, uh, that her life was continuing as before and, and changes happened. And, and then all of a sudden we get the feeling that um, she has turned into this. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I guess sometime when he left her, and she stayed at home, and her mobile phone service ran out and stopped paying attention to the news. So, so at that point, she's sort of disconnected from her. So maybe it's maybe it's not a sudden thing. Maybe she doesn't. But didn't it said earlier? Oh, sorry, I'm jumping around a bit. Um, it said you, you have to be some. You have to spit in the <coughs> mouth of someone to turn them yeah. into. Yeah. Right. That's one. We're just not told when it happens, but at some point. Right. One. Yeah. Maybe... I mean, I assume. It happened at the flood, and then she gradually settled into it. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Well, because there's not sort of the singular traumatic event in her life. It's this series of choices about settling and just this gradual decline of her making suboptimal decisions that are fine, right? This is fine. This guy's fine. The shop's fine. I'll live here. It's fine. The thing she looks forward to every day is the click of the window. Like, yeah. Mm. But like, yeah, clearly, she had you know skills and education and was doing stuff before she decided to settle. Uh, yeah. Because that there is that thing in in that in that middle section, the first person section, right at so it talks about you know we've done this and and this is us, and then it says what about you, Nan Cookie? What are you going to do? And then he she got woken up when she was lying across one of the classroom tables. So maybe at that point, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe at that point she she sort of turned, but she didn't didn't have the sort of physical manifestation of it that that they describe. She's kind of weird. I think I like it because if you make it. Because the whole the way that the story deals with the Krasu is by. Not leaning into the horror part of it. Right. Mm, right. Sort of so like as soon as you go into the now this thing is floating above her and asking, can I spit in your mouth? Now you're coming back. Like as soon as you get into this quick the kind of body horror, kind of gross aspects of it. You undid everything you just did in that previous section where the Kursu is talking to the reader. Um, there's no way to keep this new version of the Kursu where they're kind of freed and kind of cool and just like almost like the natural evolution for humans who are kind of like, 
or women really who are just kind of like fed up with their lives who opt into it like that stance where it's like oh we help each other and the younger ones think you know maybe we should like do something to like fix our reputation but like why right like you have this whole world of like social pursues who just are like i don't know like some wild supportive coven <laughs> and then you don't want to ruin that with the spit scene right yes. yeah. yeah but I, I i feel that that I feel that maybe you do have to anchor it in 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 some in some sense of of quotes reality in that the there needs to be a point at which you become one there there needs to because you, or do you suddenly sort of do you suddenly fall into it do you do you you know maybe you don't decide to become one but maybe um you think oh I might as well perhaps mm hmm I don't know. It's, it's strange to, to 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 bring up the spitting thing when it's not when she is. We don't see it happening to her. It's like Chekhov's spit in the mouth. <laughs> yes. You know what's funny is you could is the author could have made the Krasu not spit to um, change people, but she also does stick to like the canon of the Krasu lore, right? Like, no, no, they are floating heads with intestines and they do spit to convert people. I'm not going to refute that part of the story. I'm just going to refute their motives. And, right. you know, which is like interesting, right? Because like, if you're not going to do a spit scene, you have the choice to just be like, oh, by the way, we don't spit in people's mouths <coughs> to change them. That's weird. Mm. Why would that work? But she doesn't do that, which I like that choice, right? She just, yeah. Mm. Yeah, they spit. What's and what? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. And that whole idea of like we look like you guys do on the inside, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the pros was really. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the word would be. I don't want to say sparse because that's not the case. It was just like. Like the very clean version of like kind of that MFA style that we've like pinned before without being overwrought. Like it's very clearly MFA style, but it's not being manipulative with your emotions, which I like. In part because none of these characters are very passionate. So it's hard. Mm. You know what I mean? Like they they feel flat. They're a little dead inside probably from like the constant having to deal with like floods and disappointments. And I mean, the only one who's still like kind of chipper is Egg. And he seems odd. He seems odd <laughs> for being so chipper. He's out of place. <laughs> no. Nope. Yeah, I guess. Because because this kind of story, and then I lost my parents' noodle shop. It could be the kind of story that eventually that could very easily be manipulative, but it's not. Mm. And and it and overall, it's quite a bleak story, isn't it? It's, 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 there's there's not much good stuff that happens. It's it's you know it. it she yeah, lost her she gets to become she... a cool recluse at the end. What? Yeah. Well. You know, if that's and then your, look at all of hey. those rotting crops. The smorgasbord. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She could eat off those buffaloes forever, let me tell you. Oh, yeah. She's set. She's set for life. Yes. And she can work from home. Just do translation work. We all love that now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like the story. I. I don't know. It's funny because like I really like it, but I wouldn't say it's one of those like scream from the rooftop kind of things. But if somebody was like, like, oh, give me something I can read that's different. This is you know what I mean. Like this would be on my list of like this is different. This doesn't feel like a very typical uh, story. It does some interesting things, you know. Yeah, I wouldn't shout it from the rooftops, but it would be on my recommendation list for particular people. I don't. Know, I specifically. I was reading this on my lunch break at work, and I specifically I sent it to uh, to a friend of the show and my personal friend Karina. Um, I was like, ah, this one's good. I'm gonna, you should read this. <laughs> and what did she say? What was her hot take? She's like, that's real good. I liked it. <laughs> right? There's no. I like her title, friend of the show and my personal friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As she's known. As she's mm -hmm. that's what we call her around here. Yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah, no, okay. I it's good. It's yeah. good. It's okay. Not, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I can't make my mind up, but yeah. 
carry on. Sorry. Anything else you guys would like to say? We talked about the point of view shift in the middle, which was great. I yeah. thought the pacing mm. was fine, right? Some, yeah. In the very beginning, I was a little flooded out, but then it then it sped up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> flooded. Hey, oh, yeah. It, it it started off sort of grim, and and it stayed pretty grim all the way through, except except for the yeah the bit where where she became a Krasu. So yeah, I I I guess she I guess she was happy in the end. Maybe. I don't know. The Crusoe don't sound happy. They just sound um, self-possessed. That's, yeah. That seems like an upgrade for her. Yeah, <laughs> right. And she sings. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. No, I think it was Whatever. really good. I, I, yeah, I, I thought the pacing was really good, too. I don't know. I. It pushed me right along. The night, mm. the nice, goofy break in the middle was perfect. If it had gone just from the flood's going to come to the flood's here now, that might have started to drag. I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the whole bit in the middle that kind of shocked me out of everything, right? The entire narrative voice changed. It was great. And just for a little bit. I liked it. Yeah. I liked it a lot. Yeah. I also like that sentence um, after at the end, after she's a Krasu, and it's when she sang, the song rose from the hole of her gut, allowing her to discern the heft and shape of her anatomy. Right? You could just say Roche from the hole of her gut end it there. But she's like, just in case you doubt whether or not she is a Krasu. <laughs> right. Allowing her to discern the heft and shape of her anatomy. I like that. Mm -hmm. So, so, but is she, I mean, she, so I think we're guessing that she's, she's not taken on the sort of traditional floating head with entrails. Oh, I think she has. Yeah. Do you? In the Krasu section, remember where they're like, our true form is what you look like inside, and then our like human disguise form is like these emaciated women, which is like basically the end result of your fad diets. I believe, okay, now I'm drawing on some old Dungeons and Dragons monster manual information mm -hmm. here. So Very this good. is, yeah. take with okay. a grain of salt. But this is I mean, I'm going to take it as canon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I believe at nighttime their heads pull off of their bodies and so they leave a sleeping headless corpse in their bed as they float around and eat things. Okay. And then by morning they stick their head back on their body. Okay. I, I believe. You believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have that, no. the, that would seem to make sense actually because, because she, if she did change or start to change at the time of the flood then she to all the, from the narrative that she still stayed human form um mm -hmm. but maybe yeah, she yeah, yeah I, she, maybe she did become yeah they're they're one of the vast trash trash va a vast oh, trash which is a word now trash. we've invented it of uh nighttime monsters they're nighttime monsters yeah yeah they come out and feed at night okay mm -hmm. that's cool yeah. So. Okay. Anything else we want to say? Are we ready for ratings? I think we're probably ready. Uh, hmm. I'll go first with the. I uh, see. I said I'll go first. I hadn't really thought yeah. about it. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll go f I'll go first with a four and a half. Um, uh, it did do this thing where it put. Foreign words in an English story. Oh my god! <laughs> well, so you're allowed me. not to like it. I just I don't understand it. I get to <laughs> Google things and then learn stuff. I watch way too many videos about the different ways to do the high greeting, <laughs> or, the, or the why greeting. I mean, why greeting? Yeah. Why? Why uh, did you people conquer so many different countries if you didn't want to learn foreign words? Yes. The deal. I I I'm I'm happy. I don't want to con the colonies, conquer foreign right? countries. I'm I'm here. I'm, I'm happy here. I, just, I don't want to go anywhere else. Um, so, uh, so yeah, four and a half. For, for whatever reasons pertain, you know, that are my reasons and nobody else's. Your personal secret reasons. We need not discuss yes. them. Yes, because we can't. Yes, because they're going to be criticized. You can't just. <laughs> You're allowed not to like it. It's just, I like the Googling. I know. Yeah, I don't. What is this? Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, four and a half for whatever reason. Okay. 
gosh, do you want to go in East? I'm trying to decide between two numbers. I'm also yeah. trying to decide between two numbers. Okay. But it's tricky, isn't I it? I think, yes. I was yeah. coming in at a four and a half for some reason, but the more, just because like I feel like my fives I liked more. So I'm like trying to like place it with how I've come before. So my numbers don't slide everywhere. Right. But then when like you guys also really like it and we don't often agree, or we guess, I don't know, it depends. Then I'm just like, man, maybe there's more to this and it has like a wider appeal. But I think it's four and a half because I have to grade along my own scale. And I think I've liked oh. past fives more. Oh, I thought you had. I was, I haven't together. given anything in a six in a long time. I was thinking, <laughs> but I think I shouldn't give it a six simply for novelty's sake. I should only <laughs> give it a six if it's truly sixed it up. And I was like, mm. oh man, I loved it. I don't know if I six loved it. Like, yeah, so for I, for sure a five. Like a good, strong five. A five if I plus... gave half points, like some sort of yes. person, like I might give it a five and a half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, five. That is the number I will say. Five okay. star. All right. So, Gerald, what are we reading next week? Next week, we are reading Sign of the Times by Dante Pregia. Okay. But before you go, tell us if you'd like to become a Crisu in our Facebook discussion group, the Literary Roadhouse Readers. And there's one kind of flood that's actually kind of great, a flood of support. Flood our iTunes page with reviews and contribute to our podcast expenses at patreon.com slash literary roadhouse. Every bit helps. And as always, share this podcast with the TV competition singer who was voted off the show way too early. How dare the, ju the judges not recognize their real talent? That show is rigged. Until next time, read a good story. <laughs>